We're going to go now uh, to the fight against COVID-19. Omicron's BA5 losing ground to newer subvariants that are showing a growth advantage rapidly increasing. So here to tell us more about this is our chief health editor, Dr. Partha Nandy. And Dr. Nandy, we have new variants. What's happening? Yeah, the never ending story, yeah. right? I'm getting the same exact question from my patients. Now back at the start of October, BA5 was responsible for nearly 80% of new COVID-19 cases. Now it makes up 67.9%. The main reason behind this drop are three newly identified Omicron subvariants. Two of them, BQ1 and BQ11, both make up 5.7% of new cases each. The third one, BF7, makes US 5.3% of the cases in the US. Now these percentages certainly don't sound alarming, but there are a few things that scientists are concerned about. One is their doubling time, meaning they're quickly gaining ground in a short amount of time. On top of that, these subvariants can elude, can escape important monoclonal antibodies and appear to be better at evading immunity from previous infections or vaccination. Now, there's one more Omicron subvariant I want to mention, and that's XBB. It's a combination of different COVID-19 variants and multiple Omicron variants and strains. It hasn't arrived in the U.S., but scientists are keeping a close eye on it. Why? Because it looks to be extremely immune evasive, and right now it's surging in Singapore. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. So will these new-ish bivalent boosters that we're getting help protect us against, the, against this? I, I think so. I got my booster last weekend, and the new bivalent boosters target not only the original 2019 strain, but also Omicron's BA5 and BA4 subvariants. And since BQ1, Glenda, and BQ11 and BF7 are all kind of offshoots of BA5, the boosters are expected to provide some cross protection against the newer sublineages. While this is all encouraging, we don't have real world data yet and will likely learn more in the coming months. In the meantime, I will once again stress the importance of getting vaccinated and boosted. I got it, no issues at all, because most people you know, that, that, that are out there are, are gonna be protected and people that are at risk of severe disease, those are the unvaccinated, folks who are immunocompromised and folks who are 65 and up who have not received a booster shot. We've got to remember that COVID still kills. Here in the U.S., we're averaging just over 380 deaths a day. That's too many, in my opinion. And that number could increase as we expect case numbers to rise this winter. So I think we'll keep you know track of all these subvariants, but do your part, get vaccinated. We've got these bivalent you know, boosters, and, and let's get them. You know, and regular colds are lasting a while. So if you're experiencing any kind of sickness, should you wait before you get a booster? I would get tested and make sure you know what's going on because it's hard to tell. Okay. You know, colds can last longer, but the symptoms are so that you can't tell them apart, especially with the new right. subvariants. I just get tested because we got testing now. All right. Thank you, Dr. Nandy. My pleasure. All right. Appreciate it. Good to of see course. you. Same here. If you have a health question for the good doctor, you can email him at drnandy at askdrnandy.com or you can send it to us on Facebook or Twitter and we'll get it right to him. Brian. Still had for